The nightmares about the house stood so sharply at odds with my otherwise normal dreams. They were always plot-oriented, like I needed to go from A to B by canoe, floating down beautiful streams in the forest. The dialogue was imaginative. The various actors were realistic and alive. It was sporadic that my dreams repeated themselves night after night, and their plots were seldom recycled. They didn't always end with some kind of happily ever after, but at least I hardly ever woke up screaming from them. I had to explain to one of my neighbors once about the nightmares. They were new, knocked on the door to make sure I was okay. When I was finished, she asked me, her tone all kinds of serious, if the spiderweb ghost had anything to do with it. With a bit of a sideways grin, I asked her what she meant. She just kind of nodded, said she'd see if she could help, and went back to her place. The following day, she had slipped a business card under the door of my place. It was the name of my now familiar therapist. I'm not ashamed to say that I tried to chat her up again, but we never had any free time together due to conflicting schedules. She moved out maybe a month later and vanished into obscurity. The building did that to some people. They would move in, but then they would leave barely two, three months afterward. Honestly, it might have just been my imagination, but somehow many of them seemed diminished, exhausted. Wall of Ghosts by Joseph McAvoy Available for purchase on Kindle and Amazon Direct.